Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And uh, today I have brought a very deep and intricate concept for you in this video. It was based, uh, I mean, the, a question was asked in All India Test Series, uh, Open Test, one of the coaching institutes. Uh, and uh, the given key was wrong and the solution was also wrong and it was really bothering some of the students and they approached me with it so i decided to do a video so it's a numerical but i'm going to give you the intricate theory that is involved i'm going to do the complete derivation and uh, there's also a formula given in erudov uh, uh, which relates the, the number of collisions per unit area uh, uh, to the density of the particles and that derivation also i'm going to give a rigorous proof it's understandable you can very easily understand it although uh, a bit uh, difficult to come upon your own so please stay tuned till end to understand the idea so here i present to you the question and then i'll present to you the correct solution so what's the question let's see okay, here's the question 10 to the power 25 atoms of helium uh, in a container of volume 27 liter are in random motion okay so there are uh, particles which are randomly moving in the container okay assume speed of atoms is same and equal to 2 into 10 to the power of 3 meter per second so here there is a slight deviation from the standard model. Here it is given that speed of all the particles is same. Not even one particle is moving with any different speed. No Maxwell Boltzmann distribution or anything. So every particle is moving with the same speed. Okay, But the speed is random. Okay, It is randomly directed. Okay, So uh, same. Uh, it says see random motion. So random motion but constant speed. So it is a special case of a random motion. Okay, There is no statistical distribution like Maxwell Boltzmann coming into play here mass of helium atom is uh, okay the speed is 2 into 10 to the power 3 meter per second mass of mass of helium atom is 6.65 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilogram and each collision is elastic okay so then we have to comment on the four options uh, what are the four options Num a is uh, uh, pressure of the gas is 3.3 into 10 to the power 6 pressure of the gas is this much number of atoms hitting the wall of 1 meter square area in a second is this much or number of atoms hitting the wall of one meter square area in second is this so we have to comment on basically pressure and the number of collisions happening per unit area okay and uh, the given key was uh, uh, a and c but the key is not correct i'll let you know what's the correct key let's see so before i get into the numerical solution i'll present to you the model how to model this problem and how to get the right answer okay so let's say there is some uh, ith particle uh, some general particle whose x component of velocity is let us say vxi in fact instead of velocity i should say speed so let's say x component of speed quote sun quote speed uh, is vxi okay in the x direction so what is the round trip time from this wall to this wall what is the round trip time if the side length is l so the round trip time is obviously L upon VXI and then coming back also 2L by VXI. This type of thing you do in uh, uh, KTG all, all the time. Okay. So the round trip time is uh, for the ith particle is 2L upon VXI. This is the round trip time. So how many collisions will it make with the right wall per unit time? So you know that frequency of collision is reciprocal of the time period of collisions, right? So number of collisions this particle makes up with the right wall per unit time is simply reciprocal of this. That is vxi divided by 2l okay now let us say total number of particles in the cube is capital n then total collision frequency with the right wall will be that will be the collision frequency of the all the particles uh, added together superposition of the collision frequencies of all the particles so that will be simply so total nu is sigma nu i that is 1 by 2l and sigma vxi right uh, so where vxi is the uh, I, x component of the speed of the ith particle okay all the time i'm using the word speed because it doesn't matter whether the particle is going in this direction or that direction because the speed is always keep it, keeps on reversing in the x direction because of the collision so it doesn't matter whether initially it is left or right uh, after let's say uh, up, uh, lo lots of collision you are seeing after a long time so speed is what matters right now let this particle be flying at an angle theta i with the x axis so let's say this has a theta i angle with the x axis so then uh, uh, vxi is nothing but v cos theta i right or rather you can say mod of cos theta i because again it's speed so mod of cos theta i i can say so v mod cos theta i so and since v is same for all the particles so i can take v outside and then then inside the sigma you are left with 
sigma of cos theta i right rather sigma of mod cos theta i and now theta i are uniformly distributed over a sphere why because the motion is randomly directed and therefore this equal probability of going in along any direction cosine so all the theta they are uniformly distributed over a sphere now here is where the solution went wrong uh, instead of assuming the particles to have equal probability in all the directions they just assume that particle is either moving in x or in y or in z which is not a correct model that's not how you define the random velocities random velocity means it has to be spherically symmetric and not that uh, only along x or only along y or only along z that's not how the gas particles move right so random motion means spherical symmetry right so now theta i are uniformly distributed over a sphere however for calculation of sigma cos theta i we can assume them to be distributed over a hemisphere why is that see if a particle is moving in this direction or it is moving in this direction with respect to x axis you can see that as far as x component of speed is concerned it is the same thing right so you might as well reflect all these uh, uh, on the left hemisphere all these vectors you can reflect into the right hemisphere and it will not make any difference to the calculation of average speed so what i am going to do i am going to assume that all the velocity vectors they are distributed over the right hemisphere because it's the mod cos theta i that i am interested in right because average speed is required right so for purpose of calculating mod of cos theta i so uh, theta 1 is equivalent to theta 2 whether i take this theta or whether i take this theta so long as these vectors are equally inclined uh, the magnitude is equally inclined it is the same thing that's why i can uh, reflect into the hemispheres and i can assume that velocities are distributed over a hemisphere okay so now let us assume all the n unit vectors see so every velocity vector has got some unit vector okay uh, so let us say uh, all the n unit vectors along the velocity vectors to be uniformly distributed over a unit hemisphere so i have made a unit hemisphere and all the velocity unit vectors right not the velocity vector speed is constant so i am interested in the average value of the uh, or rather summation of the component of the unit vectors of velocities right because speed i have already taken outside so number of unit vectors per unit surface area of this hemisphere will be what see so uh, that uh, so you know that area of the hemisphere is 2 pi r square right so here I have taken unit vector so it is 2 pi into 1 square is the area and let us say capital N is the total number of uh, particles so capital N divided by 2 pi into 1 square is the uh, density of unit vectors which are crossing the unit surface area of this I mean uh, D, uh, yes uh, number of uh, unit vectors crossing per unit surface area of this unit hemisphere right so number now let us say I consider a small area ds over this hemisphere so what will be the number of vectors on the surface patch ds so uh, number should be simply uh, density of unit vectors into the surface area of this patch so i can say number of unit vectors is sigma into ds that's it right so this is the number of unit vectors which are crossing through patch ds but i am interested in the summation of its cos theta components right so uh, i should have written here as uh, this is theta this is not d theta this is theta okay and ds patch is located at angle theta and you know that all these unit vectors their uh, component along x axis is what 1 cos theta right so 1 cos theta 1 cos theta 1 cos theta for each unit vector so i just multiply the number of unit vectors by cos theta so that so that gives you the summation of the x component of these unit vectors right so so dn is sigma ds and summation of x component of unit vectors is simply dn into cos theta that is sigma into ds into cos theta i hope this is clear so far now uh, something beautiful happens uh, here uh, as you keep on doing this even for your surface tension questions or many times you use the idea of projected area even in electrostatic sometimes so ds cos theta is nothing but the projection of this patch on the this uh, circular surface of the hemisphere right so this is your ds cos theta so i can say that this is shadow area in this direction the light is coming from here so ds cos theta is this shadow area of the patch right so now realize that ds cos theta is shadow area of ds in the vertical plane that is circular phase so integral of dn cos theta is nothing but sigma into uh, integration of ds shadow and what is the integration of ds shadow so it's a unit hemisphere so what is the shadow area so uh, you know that it is pi into radius square and radius is one unit so shadow area is simply pi into one square right so this is sigma into pi into one square that is the summation of all the cos theta okay of all these unit vectors cos theta summation is sigma into pi into 1 square okay by taking the entire shadow area so what is the summation uh, so i just now put the value of sigma so sigma i had found as number of unit vectors per unit uh, surface area of the unit hemisphere so that was n upon 2 pi into 1 square 
and pi into 1 squares comes as it is this is the sigma and this comes out to be the summation comes out to be simply n by 2 so i hope this is clear now uh, this is my equation 9 which has summed up all the mod cos theta for all the particles and i can now use uh, this ninth equation in the equation number 4 what was my equation 4 see this was my equation 4 for collision frequency so i just put n by 2 over here and what am i left with it will become v by 4 nl right so what do i get so uh, the uh, okay uh, n v rather n by 2 you uh, this is n by 2 so v by uh, 4 nl it becomes because it was already you see what was equation 4 once again we can see it was v by 2l into summation of cos theta i and the summation of cos theta y i was n by 2 so n by 2 into v by 2l becomes n v by 4l okay so that's what it is so this is your collision frequency with the right wall now if i want to find collisions per unit area i just need to uh, divide this by uh, the area of the wall so what is the area of the wall that is l square so collisions per unit area to so nu upon a that is nv by 4l into 1 by l square so that becomes nv upon 4l cube right and realize that n upon l cube is nothing but number of particles per unit volume so it simply becomes number of particles per unit volume into v by 4 okay so this is the number of collisions happening per unit time per unit area and some of you might recognize this equation from erodo uh, this equation is generally not given in the je level textbooks but it's there in erodo and sometimes students uh, uh, feel that how um, how we got this equation so this is this is the equation that we have got and this was the derivation but then this is a special case when all the particles were moving at the same speed now what if the particles were having a maxwell boltzmann distribution or something like that for that also i will be presenting the proof but after solving this problem at the end of the video i am also going to generalize this for the any kind of distribution uh, this uh, why this formula will hold for any kind of distribution so long as the uh, angles are randomly directed the motion is random the speed may be having some distribution it doesn't matter same formula will hold so nonetheless okay so uh, we will co uh, come to that in the end and now i am going to use this formula for calculating the uh, uh, the number of collisions per unit area for the current problem we'll plugging in the values okay here eta is the particle density right particles per unit volume so now uh, for our problem the given data was volume was 27 liters uh, so that I have converted to meter cube, uh, number of particles was 10 to the power 25 and the speed of each particle was 2000 meter per second, right. So just plug in the values and what do you get? You get 1.85 into 10 to the power 29 uh, collisions per, uh, I didn't write the unit but understood, uh, it is uh, number of collisions per uh, second per meter square, that's the unit, okay. So now let's look at the uh, options so option c is number of atoms hitting the wall of one meter square area in a second is 1.23 into 10 to the power 29 uh, this is not correct this is not what i've got similarly number of atoms hitting the wall of one meter square area is 6.17 into 10 to the power 20 so both these options are wrong both of them are incorrect and uh, this is the right answer so both c and d are incorrect but c was given as the right answer now how did they get c actually they assumed that uh, uh, there are six faces to the cube and uh, one sixth number of particles is colliding with the right face one sixth is colliding with the left so, so with the place where i got a factor of one by four they got a factor of one by six here instead of a uh, factor of one by four they got a factor of one by six which is obviously incorrect and uh, if you uh, if you mul uh, multiply this by four and divide this by six then you will get the c which is incorrect answer okay now calculating the pressure so pressure part was trivial c uh, with the in the standard kinetic theory of gases you prove that the uh, rms velocity is under root 3p by rho okay and uh, for uh, deriving this you you don't use maxwell boltzmann distribution anywhere so this is valid even when the all the speeds are same but when the speeds are same average speed and uh, rms speed and all those kinds of things most probable everything is same right so i can just uh, plug in instead of v rms i can just plug in the uh, average speed and pressure is simply rho v cube by 3 and now this is trivial so uh, rho is the particle density so total mass divided by total volume so capital n into small m upon capital v capital v is the volume into v square that is the speed square divided by 3 so just plug in the values and you get pressure as this this is this was correct okay so 3.28 is approximately 3.3 .3, so option a is correct but option c was given as incorrect and the solution was incorrect now uh, now uh, ready for the general case solution collision frequency 
per unit area when there is maxwell boltzmann distribution or for that matter any kinds of kind of distribution for numerical value of speed so long as the um, this thing is randomized the directions of the particles is randomized what we can do so i have written what note that equation 11 is valid in the following form even if the speeds have a statistical distribution only requirement is that the velocity vectors must be randomly directed so what was our equation 11 this was the equation 11 uh, this is the equation 11 so in our case uh, the speed was constant so there's nothing average i have not written any average over here but you just replace replace this by average speed then this equation is still valid now how is the why is that valid that i can simply show by superposition this can be proved by superposition let n1 molecules have speed v1 n2 molecules have speed v2 and so on then number of collisions per unit area is number of collisions of type 1 per unit area plus number of collisions per of type 2 per unit area and so on so what do we get so that is n1 by 4v into v1 plus n2 by 4v into v2 and so on this is what you will get and just uh, a little manipulation you can multiply and divide it by the total number of particles so what happens so n1 v1 plus n2 v2 whole thing divided by n becomes nothing but average speed right and then n by 4 v comes as it is and what you are left with is n by 4 v into v average so this was the formula that is given in erodo of course notation is a little different he uses something else for particle density but i prefer to use eta so this is our formula that's given in the erodo i hope uh, you understood the derivation if you have any questions please uh, regarding this video uh, please uh, mention them in the comment box and I'll try to reply and uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as uh, I enjoyed uh, 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 explaining this concept to all of you and if you did enjoy the video please do give it a thumbs up and uh, uh, please share this video as much as possible with your friends through WhatsApp, Telegram, Discord or uh, whatever medium you use uh, for networking with fellow students who are preparing for JE or Olympiads. And most importantly, if you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day. And uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. And as always, God bless you all. Thank you.